is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. As the Wolf Pack has been released. Big O, what's good, man? Good morning, my brother. How you doing? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. Doing uh, all right. Any truth that you were uh, trying to track down uh, Antonio Brown at a Nets game? <laughs> no, not at all. I've done enough Antonio Brown coverage in my days. I spent four days outside of his house when I used to work for ESPN. Uh, when he got when he uh, beat up the moving truck driver. Oh, yeah. I was Sports Center camping out. Neighbors driving by, telling me how he's such a nuisance. And uh, yeah, so I, I've had enough. I'm yeah. done following Antonio Brown around. You know, yeah, I, I I had my piece on that yesterday, and it, look, dude, there's no doubt he needs some help, but there's also no doubt he's a first class asshole. Yeah. Okay. There, there's. You listen. I think we all know people that struggle with some mental issues, and they're really good people, and they're just fighting the fight, you know. And yeah, but they're not. They're not out trying to hurt people or anything like that, or. Or just you know beating up truck drivers or assaulting women or yeah. or you know or filming uh, you know naked uh, Steelers in a locker room or right. or walking out in the middle of a game you know what I mean sometimes you're just a jerk yeah and, yeah. and 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 yeah he might be a crazy jerk but he's a jerk before he's crazy okay yeah. let's not don't don't yeah. excuse his behavior. Oh, it's interesting what teams will put up with. You know, there's oh. a scouting saying that if Hannibal Lecter ran a 4-2, they just say he had an eating disorder. You know, right. you can make excuses for guys if they can play. Uh, but I think I think it's run out for AB. I, I'd imagine. I don't know. Yes. Maybe, yes. maybe some other team gets fooled again and thinks they can save them. But I'd imagine Tom Brady, Bruce Arians are probably the most lenient people you can have as far as giving talent second chances and third chances and fourth chances. I can't imagine he plays another snap in the league. Oh, no, yeah, no, he's done. I, I, I'll i go out on a limb and say he's yeah. done. Although Tampa hasn't officially released him, I believe, right? So Yeah, I think, I think there's so, going to be some lawyers there, some legal things where they're trying yeah. to figure out whether they don't have to pay him. And then there's also a scenario you cut him, maybe another playoff team decides, hey, I'm bite the bullet and sign him for a few weeks, and now you got to play oh, the Packers and Antonio yeah. Brown – you know, in the playoffs. So I think there's a lot of stuff they're trying to maneuver and, uh, and figure and, out. And this is a guy also that, that had a fake COVID card and, yep. you know, most of your coaches are old and stuff. And I know even, uh, uh, Bruce has, uh, you know, some, some, yeah. some health yeah, issues he, too. He had cancer. He had cancer in the past. So it's like, so it's crazy, man. I haven't seen something as wild as Antonio Brown and every no. episode that we've seen in this league. I don't know if ever, I mean, it's no, no, Jeez. I've never seen anything like this. Stuff like this usually happens behind the scenes. Right. During the week, it's Lawrence Taylor showing up in handcuffs to practice. It's um, uh, Curtis Enos showing up to Bears practice. It, it dressed in his in his uniform, but he had a fur coat on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's lining up to like right. with a fur coat. Right. He's trying to he's trying to go through practice drills. Hey. For a coat. You know what I mean? Right. These are the things that happen, but they usually happen. And it's just a story you hear that right. it happened at practice. Yep. Not ever in the middle of a game. And it's crazy. It makes me respect Mike Tomlin even more because you yes. forget that Antonio Amen. Brown had eight, what, eight years in Pittsburgh where we thought that he was relatively normal, you know. And, <laughs> and, 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 and by the way. Yeah. And by the way, the dirtiest one of them all, which last night made me disgusting. Yeah. 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 I couldn't watch that game yesterday, bro. Yeah. I couldn't watch that game. I'm watching pre half the pregame stuff and there, and this is all this big Ben love fest. And I'm sorry, dude, this is like OJ to me. Yeah. It's like, I look at him and I cringe because you just feel like he got away with something and I'm not celebrating you, dude. And it's like, you know, I just, I felt dirty. I, I go, if I watch this, I, I feel dirty watching this, dude. You know, I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to check this out. I'll wait for the heat at ten o'clock, and I'll go and I'll go do some other things. And I thought of doing some other productive things instead. I, I just that, that part of me. I don't know if you felt the same way, but I was like, 
yeah, dude, I'm not here to celebrate Big Ben. I'm sorry. Yeah, dude. yeah. It's, it's always funny, you know, when they had the NBA kind of last season deals, you know, Kobe had his, Dwayne Wade had his. And and I remember hearing people joke with like Paul Pierce and some of these other dudes, like, you aren't these dudes. So like, oh, yeah. you, you don't have your, your go. So for me, like, like, I, like the Big Ben stuff, like he is wow. definitely not the model citizen. He's got skeletons in his closet that people really didn't, give him as much uh criticism to him as he deserves but honestly he isn't one of the all-time great for me like i know no, he's I, the Super yeah, Bowl, but yeah. like to me it's like you know okay you were kind of like phil rivers last year yeah you were a good quarterback but i don't really you know i'm not gonna get emotional or clap or do a tribute right. for all these years you know maybe if i lived in pittsburgh it was different but i don't view him as one of the top three five quarterbacks of this generation yeah, yeah, you're not, you're going, you're not looking at him like Brady and Montana no, and those or any of these guys. And, no. Yeah, yeah, you're not looking at him. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't need a Big Ben tribute video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, definitely not, definitely not. And he's been a first class jerk, yeah. also as a teammate. Yeah. By the way, okay, so let's not also hide that fact too. That's why Mike Tomlin, you know, I you know, let me tell you something. Here's where I was dead ass wrong. Because right before all this stuff broke about about Le'Veon and 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 you know Antonio and everything, I thought Mike was kind of losing the grip right. of the Steelers, you know, and yeah. and, and you know lately the Steelers, that, yeah. yeah, lately the Steelers aren't haven't been the Steelers of the past, you know what I'm saying? So in a way, they have kind of taken a step back, but then you start to look at okay, okay, now I see why because. Right. And the thing about and the right. thing about Tomlin is he never lets the bottom fully drop off. Like they fell yeah. off as far as right. like AFC Super Bowl contender, but I saw the stat last night: fifteen years never had a losing record. Right? Like, can you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Like even this year is a disappointing year for them. I think they're eight, seven, and one. They're either going to end up eight, eight, and one, or nine, seven, and one, and, and probably miss the playoffs. But that's a disappointing year for the Steelers. Can't you know? If I was a fan, if if, if Nine seven and one is a disappointing year for me. I feel pretty good about my team. I I, I live I lived that dude. Yeah, I lived it. His name is Don I, Shula. I, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a Don, Don Shula. Shula. Yeah, Don <laughs> Shula had like like in 25 years he had like one six and ten season, like two eight and eights or something. It was like yeah. rare. Yeah, you know how look, look Cam because you're young. So this is how bad it was with Shula. Okay, look how ridiculous we got. Listen yeah. to this. Mm -hmm. At the end of his run. We would say, well, Shula only makes the playoffs. That's not good enough anymore. Yeah, that's wild. When you get so content on Super Bowls, you don't accept that. Hey, there's 20 other teams at home that wish they were in your spot. It's uh, it's surreal. It's kind of how. I and since we pushed his ass out, yep, they've never resembled anything like what they used Nothing to be close. under him. You know what I'm saying? Nothing close. So, Nothing close. Th th this is why I always tell people perspective. Because when people, you know, like when they sign Whiteside and Johnson and those guys to those terrible contracts and people are like, oh, Riley's losing. And I said, pump the brakes. OK, <laughs> they made a mistake. Right. But Riley didn't lose it. I'm not doing I'm this saying. again. Go to Sacramento if you want to see teams that are really yeah. losing it for a long time. I'm not doing this again. We did it with Shula. I'm not doing this again. When Riley says I'm leaving, he can leave whenever the hell he wants. But I ain't pushing him out anymore. Oh yeah, I'm not. We did that to Shula. Oh, the game's passing him by. The game's passing him by, and we paid the price. Right. You know what? Those guys are great. They're not perfect. They're gonna have some bad days, some bad years. And Riley has been phenomenal. I'm never going to pick on Riley. And say, oh, you got to make a change because he had a down year or some. Screw that, bro. You stay with the rough times, and and it'll get better eventually because you have a Riley, because you have a Shula, because you have a Mike Tomlin. You ride it out. And that's the one thing about the Roonies. Yeah. They, they even Chuck Noll had some rough times and they wrote it in. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they were and they were and they were strong with Cower and they've been strong with with Tomlin. And that's that's the good thing about having a great ownership group and family mm -hmm. that really understands football and supports their coaches. That's Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, man. I think they've had like maybe five coaches. I remember in their franchise, been like 40 years, yeah. 40, 50 yeah. years. Oh, no, three in the last like 50 because it's yeah. no, no, uh, Cower and Tom. Like, it's a standard. Yeah. yeah, it's a standard. Yeah, it's, standard. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It really is. All right. So let's get to uh, a little dolphin uh, action. Um, so 
where are you right now with all of this? Because obviously there's all kinds of schools of thought. Where does Miami have to go in your eyes? Because obviously talking about New England this week doesn't really make yeah. a difference now. It's it's about starting to talk about the future now. So in your eyes, if you were if you were in Chris Greer's place, what direction must this franchise go in in the in in the offseason? Well, first of all, I think that you bring Chris Greer, you bring Brian Flores back. I know you disagree with Flores. Um, so we've talked about that, but I, I think that, but the pressure's on. And I tweeted about this after the game. Uh, some people agreed, some people disagreed, but I think that this is, you know, whether you like Flores, whether you dislike Flores, the facts are the facts. Three years in with Greer and Flores taken together and they missed the playoffs all three years. So you're four, you come into it, assuming they're both back. And I do assume they're both back the pressure's on to win. So I've seen glimpses of why I believe that this team can be a contender, a playoff, but they have to do it. You know, we can't pick out, oh, these seven games in this season, seven games the second half of last year, and say, oh, that's the promise. You have to do it over the full season. And I got to see the playoffs. So I, I think you come in with a lot of pressure on Chris Greer, a lot of pressure on Brian Flores, a lot of pressure on everybody in the organization that, not saying it's it's a, a – the all or bust year, but it feels like 2022 will be in that realm. So you have to have a lot of honest conversations with yourself about the key positions. And it starts with quarterback, right? We always talk about it on this show. Do you feel like to, do I want to go all in my chips with Tua? And that's something that, you know, you and I can answer. We can say, yeah, we feel comfortable going all in with Tua. If you put better offensive line around, if you put a better OC or a line coach around them, then we'll feel good about it. But we're not the ones with our jobs on the line. So they've got to have the, the honest conversations. Do they feel comfortable with Tua all in with all their chips on the marbles and, and building the roster around them and betting on them? Or do they feel like, hey, I'm going to take my shot at a Deshaun Watson. I'm going to take my shot at one of these veteran quarterbacks and probably say we're not going to have a lot of resources draft wise to improve the roster. But we feel like improving quarterback will be enough for us to get over the hump. Those, okay. to me are, those are, to me, are the two big decisions. You either got to improve the roster significantly with all your money and your draft picks, or you improve your quarterback and say that, that that's going to give us over the hump. So that, okay. to me, is the decision that you you have to make. Can you okay, make enough right. tweaks? But, you know, on this show, we don't do fence straddling. So, oh, which, yeah. one you, so which one are you going with? I'm sticking with Tua, man. I'm building this roster. Okay, because that's, that's, that's that's I was going to tell you, going with, with – if you go Watson and you don't have the resources right. – and, 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 the and reason what why, you have now with yeah. with with Watson, yeah, you're you're a nothing team again. And, and the reason why I say that is because I'm not, not because like I think that Tua, I'm sold on Tua as a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Because I told you last time, I I believe in Tua, but I also believe that he has to excel more in areas. Like last night, I was very disappointed because I I thought this was a game where Tua could really show us that hey, I've taken the big step where I yeah. can expand no, beyond. Terrible. Terrible. And, and he wasn't he wasn't good enough. So he's got to prove it to me. But my issue is even beyond the two quarterbacks, Watson's clearly an upgrade over Tua. But I think this roster is too far away. I don't think that they're Watson away from being a contender. I think they have too many holes in the O-line, too many holes in the receiving group, too many holes, even on defense, as we saw yesterday, that about still coaching. need to be fixed in, about in the coaching. coaching element. So for me, I feel like this team isn't a Watson away from the Super Bowl. They may think so. There may be people in that Dolphins building that say, hey, if we get Deshaun Watson, we should be a Super Bowl and AFC contender. I'm, I don't, I'm not one of those people. So for me, you're asking me what I would do if I was Brian Flores, I was I was uh, Chris Greer, I would stick with Tua. I would make this the make or break year for all of us. We drafted Tua, fifth overall. We believed in him then. Let's go spend our $75 million in free agency and build up a wall, as, as uh, our not good friend Donald Trump would say. Um, and try to try to get this offensive line right. Go sign you a left tackle. Go sign you a right guard, a right tackle. Get you a group that you feel comfortable with. Get you a running back. I'm tired of them running an RPO based offense without a running back. How can you? That's the first. That's the first word. RP run run. You can't run the football. You don't have. Yeah, you know, that's, I, I was just talking about that. They were asking me about the RPO, and I go. It's asinine. It's 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 an oxymoron to run exactly. an RPO when you can't run. Right. I mean, and I know, if I your know, run I, is not a threat, how in the hell is the RPO going to work, bro? I, I, I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. So I, I I'm I'm not assuming Chris Greer is here watching us. But if for some reason you're sitting in your office not doing anything, watching us, Chris, please 
please go get a running back. Use resources, draft a running back. You don't have to spend money on it. Spend money on the offensive line. We're tired of waiting for the offensive line to develop. Go get proven guys. Overpay them if you have to. That's the way free agency works. Go draft a running back. Go draft running back high and see it. And if Tua still fails, if you still can't get to the playoffs then, then, hey, everybody's probably getting fired in 2022. But for me, if you're asking me my all-in bet, I'd I'd go all-in that way. That's the way I'd do it. All right, so I'll follow it up with this. I get the impression that Flo doesn't believe in Tua at all. Mm Mm-hmm. So, how do you bring that combo back? Do you believe they're going to bring that combo back? Because I almost have a feeling that the front office has to make a decision. We're going to go with Tua and we're building around Tua, but we can't do it with Flo. Right. And I almost have a feeling that Flo is going to say, yeah, I want to continue, but I want to continue without Tua. Because he's not a Tua fan. So, there is some kind of a you know some 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 kind of a divide there right now it's clear yeah. it's obvious you yeah, know Flo can bs you guys all you want about how he tries to talk up to a right. but it's the weakest talk up i have ever seen a coach for a quarterback the most right. important position on the team so have big, at it big o let's be real um i know omar makes this comparison all the time you don't you don't go into a dating spectrum and try to you know talk to all these other women do all these other things if you're truly committed to being with your your woman. So I think that you know I know there's a lot of fans who wanted to paint themselves and sorry if you're one of those people watching fans uh, they wanted to paint themselves naive and say the Deshaun Watson track it wasn't real it was made up in the media. I'm here to tell you it was real. The Dolphins were very interested in Deshaun Watson. Um, if there were elements that were figured out in his legal situation as far as the settlements, I think there's a good chance that Deshaun Watson's already a Dolphin. So if you believe that the Dolphins weren't behind it and it was Deshaun, then, then you're just being naive. So if there's a team, if that team at midseason was ready to give up and go all in on Deshaun, had they seen enough in these last eight games to completely change their mind? Seven game win streak was 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 good. We saw progress, but at the end of the day. This team ended the same way they did last year. So my belief is they still go into the offseason with the same thought they did at midseason and say, is there if there's a way for us to improve the quarterback position and go get Deshaun, we'll do it. So I definitely think that the Dolphins will be- definitely be back in the Deshaun Watson um, you know, trade talks. Now the question is, does the price go up? Texans want more if he settles. Are the Dolphins willing to meet that? How do things evolve now that you're in the offseason? You know what your picks are. Those are elements that are a little bit unknown. But as far as Dolphins' interest, I don't believe they watched the second half of the year and said, we're good. We're good. We don't need Deshaun yeah. anymore. And, yeah, and, I, and like you said, if they, if you, you, whether it's Flores, whether it's Greer, there's clearly a disconnect on believing in two as their franchise yes. quarterback. You can tell on what they said and what they didn't say. When everything is coming their way, bullets on their wall, you hear your quarterback essentially saying, I don't know what's going on. And you don't really come out until after the trade deadline and, and try to try to put fire on that. That tells me that you were ready to move on and do this move. And I think, again, in the offseason, they'll be ready to do it again. So how do you move on with Tua knowing that that element exists? And obviously, he even addressed it yeah. and talked about it, how you know he's been always hearing you know from day one since he's been here the negative talk about whether he's the guy or not. How do you create how does that create a, a positive environment for your quarterback? It hasn't been a positive environment, but the thing about this team and Flores in particular that I've learned is that he ignores um a lot of what we think are obvious, you know, noise, obvious uh, adversity, obvious things that affect your quarterback. So I would talk to people close to Flores around him in the building, and I'm like, especially when things started to get real loud about Sean, I'm like, you have to address this. Like you can't just let this keep bubbling and questions And his, in his Flores, mindset is that we just, we ignore the distractions. It does not matter. It does not matter what everybody else says in the building. It does not matter what the perception is. It does not matter any of this. And so in theory, maybe that sounds great, but these are 22, 23 year old kids who are human. You know, they have social media. You could say, Oh, block it all out. Come on. All right, let's be real. Right, so, so, I, so, so, I'm, so, so, so I'm the so I'm the so I'm the adult. Right. So my 14 year old son goes to the backyard, lights a tree on fire, 
yeah. half my backyard's on fire, and I'm supposed to say, "Oh no, that's no, that's not important. Don't worry about it. It's yeah. not a big deal." So I, I started a fire, but I'm not going to address the fire. Exactly. That, uh, they're, they're, and, they're and, and, and that's my point, right? So, like, that, yeah. it, it seems obvious to us, but we're obviously not the ones making the decisions. So they believe they believe this season that it wouldn't impact things, right? So I believe that it impacted Tua. I, you know, Tua is going to say the right things. He's going to say it doesn't bother him. You know, I'm fine. I just go through the flow. I believe it impacted Tua. I am believe that it gets to you. You hear these things, and it gets to you. So they believe it doesn't impact them. Tua said it doesn't impact them. So if they decided we're going all in on Tua, I bet you they do the same thing they've done this year and say, hey, you know, we're ignoring the noise. We're going through all that matters to us. Tua is our quarterback. And I bet you they put that same message out there and act like the rest of us don't see some of the things falling around them. So it, you're asking me how they would go about it. I think they would go the same path they've they've done this season. All right, so clearly there's a disconnect in the team on Tua. Do you I, believe? I think, so do you so believe? I, I don't even know if it's a, a full disconnect on Tua. I think it's a, a disconnect on what his ceiling is. So I do believe they think that Tua. Oh, either is way, it's a disconnect to them. I think there's a disconnect on how good he can be and whether they can get to the level they want to get with him. So I don't okay. think it's like, hey, we're out on Tua. No matter what, I think it's, hey, we see somebody out there that may be prettier, that may be a bigger upgrade, and we think that guy is somebody that Tua hasn't been yet and may never be. And I think that's what the mindset is at this point. Now, on the flip side, do you believe there's a disconnect for Watson? That while I don't believe everybody in that building wants to get rid of Tua, just like I don't believe everybody in that building wants Watson. Agree right. or disagree on that one? No, I think you're absolutely right. I think Watson brings a whole different layer of issues because you bring in the, the sexual assault cases, right? That's right. To me, the main element. Like before you get to whether he's good enough on the field, you got a guy who's been alleged to have 20 something women saying he did this and that. So you got to get one, you got to get past the, the moral obligation. Like, can you bring in a guy do you feel comfortable with that? That's an owner decision. That's a GM decision. That's a head coach decision. That's everybody. That's in clearly the not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, by the way. Right. Right. So, so you got that element. Then you have the legal and suspension elements. Cause that's the thing that we haven't talked about. Right. Because if, even if he gets through some of these legal things, like there's probably going to be a grand jury some point in the off season, even if he gets point past that, and, and nothing happens, he doesn't go to jail, there's probably still going to be civil cases, and there's probably still going to be suspension. The yep. NFL has been very clear that you don't have to go to jail to, or, or have to be convicted of anything to get suspended. Zeke Elliott was, was suspended six games for his case, and he he, he didn't go to jail. He didn't get uh, convicted of anything. So to me, I see a, six games seems to be the bare minimum here. So you're going to have if you trade for this guy, you're going to have to come into a situation where you're having at least a third to a half of your season where you're starting quarterback suspended. So, and, and we already talked about this possibly being a, a 2022 make, season is done because, make break because he, he, he won four games on a crappy team last year. And right. by the way, David Mills has won the same four games with a lesser team. Right. Okay. So, so, so that's why I, I, that's the, that's where I laugh. Like, Oh no, if you bring Watson here, it changes. No, it doesn't. Right. The same team or, or you're not really going to win that much more with Watson on a bad yeah. team and a terrible coaching so, staff. So I will say, I think that Watson improves this team. I, I'll be yeah, but by what? But, by what? Game? No, exactly. Exactly. And that's my thing. I think that maybe, maybe you sneak into the wild card to Watson. Maybe that's the difference, but are you a, are you a true contender? Are you a team that's going to get to the AFC championship or Super Bowl? I don't think so. I don't think this team's ready. Just like I didn't think, like Jalen Waddle's been amazing this year. I think that he's been better. I think I told you a couple of shows ago, he's been better than I even expected. But my issue with the trade up, giving up an extra first round pick, is you make that move when you feel like you're a receiver away. And I didn't right. think that they were a receiver away. And as we saw here, clearly they weren't a receiver away. So I think a lot of these moves are based on your self-evaluation of where you are as a team. And a lot of times when you're inside the building, you – Think of yourself as loftier than you really are. You're like, oh, we're, we're good. All you need to do is do this. We do that. And we're a Super Bowl team. Everybody has that optimism. I think Dolphins have to be real with themselves this offseason about how close they truly are. Well, they're, they're definitely not close. Not yet. That's for sure. And I, I don't think you're anywhere close because of the coaching staff, too. In the end, I don't think you have the kind of coaching staff that's going to get you to a championship that's my that's my real problem right now overall yeah. because for me coaching is the bigger problem than personnel i think personnel 
as time has gone on, people have seen that players are developing. Even without a good offensive line coach, at least Robert Hunt is showing you something. Mm -hmm. I think you could probably get something out of another guy out of that group. And if you hit on two or three out of those five guys, then you did pretty good overall. So, you know, it's just to me, coaching is a real difference right now on this team. Yeah, you need some talent, but man, without the coaching, I don't know if you'll ever get there. It's going to be an interesting offseason. I, I am like, there's a lot of uncertainty to me on what they do because I do think that Flores and Greer come back, but what level of change do they make? You know, are, are they a, a, a run it back group with small changes? Is there major changes? I think that's going to be an interesting element of this offseason. Obviously, we're going to talk a lot about quarterback and Deshaun and all these different things, but I think it's going to be interesting how they evaluate this team because, like we've talked about, they've had three different OCs in three years. So, yeah, they can fire George Godsey, Eric Studisville, and the O-line coach and do all these things and replace them with new guys. But does that change? Is that really going to change anything? Like, are we confident that those three moves with a couple signings here and there, a couple draft picks, and this team is fixed? And that's what, you know, that seems to me to be the most likely path. But right. I've seen this two or three different times now. So the first, like this year, I'm not gonna lie, I had some optimism. I'm I'm going on TV talking about, hey, two is looking better. You know, yeah, me too. things they got. I Fuller. Love that too. Oh man, I was Fuller was out there. I'm like, oh man, Will Fuller and Jalen Waddle. This was when we had hope that Will Fuller would actually do it, do something this season. There was. I thought he, I thought I thought he was going to be super motivated with a one year deal, knowing, oh dude, I need to ball out and prove I can stay healthy so I can go get a big contract. You know, like the, like the typical yeah. free aging year that lots of players have. Like, oh, man, I'm headed to free agency. I got a ball out right now. And right. they do. That's what I thought Fuller was coming here to do. You know what I mean? And oh, the bit, the best and worst thing about the offseason is it's hope. We sell right. so much hope. There's so much yeah. optimism. I was joking with my friend. There's going to be Lions fans this offseason who are going to get their draft pick, number one overall pick or whatever it is, and be like, we're a playoff team. And, and and we can do this and we can do that and we're going to be good. And come October, they're going to be 0 and 5 again. And the reality is going to sink in that we suck again. And that's the thing. All season's fun because every team has a chance. But once the season starts, reality clicks in and you're like, man, we weren't as good as we thought we were. Amen to that. Follow him on Twitter at Cameron Wolf. And you can catch him twice a week here with the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, Miami Dolphins, and NFL Report. Cam, we will catch you on game day, my friend. Thank you for taking some time. All right, I'll see you next time, man. You got it, baby. There you go. Cameron Wolf. All right, we wrap it up with Cameron Wolf, and then we open the door for Ira Winderman. We talk a little Miami Heat and a little NBA with our Acura Pembroke Pines Miami Heat report to start off our number three. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.